One, two, one, two. So, just like to welcome everybody again to the second stage of our stupid education ceremony. As you're all aware, the sky <laughs> is uh, above us. So, <laughs> so, I quite like the air of tension, actually. Like we have the, the mural veiled and the Buddha veiled. There's a, an air of mystery there so what the weather is going to do is a part of that so i think we'll just begin with our um our program um just like to again welcome and express my appreciation to all of the monks here mahateras the abbots of all the different monasteries it really is a very joyful thing for me to have the sangha gathered here and to all of you um, come to join us on this occasion. So the first, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Simon, Simon Fern, who's the Vice President of the uh, Wellington Theravada Buddhist Association um, and has been, I think he's the longest standing uh, committee member. He was, he was here when uh, Lampo Tiradamo was here so it's provided that continuity, which for me, coming in as the abbot, I so much appreciated having Simon um, to offer his perspective from uh, those earlier times. He's, Simon is also um, our stonemason, so all of this stonework that you can see here um, is, uh, is his work. He has a, a partner, Gavin, who's unfortunately not here. Um, but it really has set the set the tone and the character of this of this development, both in terms of the entrance forecourt and uh, this new area here. So, without further ado, I think that's my cue to <laughs> invite Simon to come and and say a few words. Thank you, Ajahn Kusalo. Um, obviously, welcome, a, a huge welcome to all of our visiting Sangha. It's a great honor and privilege to have you here. And welcome to everyone who's come today, who's made the effort. Uh, it's, it's fantastic to see so many friendly and well-known faces from um, a, lo a long time that I've known you all, and uh, yeah, uh, it's been a huge project, really. It's been two years on this particular phase. I was uh, lucky enough to be involved in the original construction of the stupa, the stone walls out the front. So a lot of rocks have come up this hill. <laughs> Uh, I would estimate every rock that you see has been handled at least four or five times. Uh, beginning picking it at the quarry, each stone is individually picked and then loaded onto a truck and delivered here. And from the car park down below, each stone is then put into a trailer and brought up the hill on the quad bike and then taken out of the trailer, carried onto site, and laid on the ground, and then eventually used in the wall. So each stone has probably been handled about five or six times before it <laughs> gets put in the wall, maybe more. So that's not me on my own, that's been my partner, 
Gavin, who worked here, and many other people who offered help. And of course, Ajahn Kuslo, who's been driving the rock up the hill on the quad bike, without whom none of this would be possible. So this latest phase of the stupa, it's been a real privilege to work on this. Um, it's taken a lot of thought to get to this, this point in time. There's been a lot of co consultation, um, back and forth with the design work, and then when we started construction, we found another number of problems, as you usually do, and we would always work together cooperatively to overcome this, and I think there's been a lot of hard work by a lot of people. I'm really grateful to everyone who's helped. So many people have helped up here. I just it's impossible to name everyone. And then when you think back over the years, how many people have been involved in the work here? It's quite phenomenal, really, and it's really inspiring that so many people would give their time and effort and care to put into this place. I mean, not just here at Stupa, throughout the monastery. I think you can feel that. But let's just say the stoop has been a focal point for the community for a good long time now and working up here i see the people that come up here every day just to practice just to visit a lot of people come up and circumambulate and make offerings they might do a bit of chanting or a bit of meditation or they might just come up and enjoy the peace because usually the, you come up here, there's, there's no one else here, just the birds and the trees. And it's a beautiful spot, it really is. So I think the work, the work that we've done now, I think this, hello, the work that we've done now, I really hope that this has enhanced this place for years to come. Uh, our intention has to, with the stonework is to create the sense of a piece of bedrock that the stupa sits upon. So it's kind of like, it's a very earthy element and it's been, as I say, a real privilege to be involved in that. And, you know, I know personally I've, I've had some, uh, I've often come up here when I've been here on retreat and had some very lovely meditation sessions just by myself at night time, in the daytime, and I found it a very inspiring spot. And I hope that all the work here going forward into the future is inspiring to many other people as well. Um, I would just like to thank a couple of people. It's impossible to thank everyone. I'd like to thank our architect, Hugh Tennant, without whom none of this concept, as you see it, would exist. And he's been involved throughout, and we're really grateful to him for his input. I'd just like to remember my work colleague, Leon Keel, who passed away 10 years ago. And he was involved here in the early days. We did all this, w the initial work together. Leon loved this place. And I know that if he could see it now, he would be very, very happy and very proud of everything that, how it has come together. And of course, last, but very much not least, Ajahn Kuslo, Thank you so much for all your efforts. There's been a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody probably appreciates. I think the committee know, and some people know, that this has taken a lot of organisation. Um, and from all over the world, you know, uh, the, the Moonstone has come from Sri Lanka, the Entry Step also, the Buddha Rupa has come from Thailand, um, many elements from overseas. This has taken a lot of work and a lot of time and I really appreciate Ajahn's dedication and also in the physical day-to-day -day work that we've had to do here. Um, this, none of this 
recent development would have happened without Arjun's enthusiasm to drive this project. So, to Arjun Kuslo, Animal Dami. Um, so, I think I've said all I need to say. If there are any questions, <laughs> um, please do come and talk to me anytime. And just to everyone who's done anything up here at any time, whether it's even just to come and sit and appreciate or spend time and soak it up, I think, I think thank you to everyone because you can feel that energy here and, and it's beautiful. And I think this place will be here for a very long time, this stupa, this site, for years to come to be an inspiration for people. And that's all I've got to say. Thank you. So thank you, Simon. It's, it's. Uh, I think part of Lumpur Cha's teaching, or the way that he. Uh, developed the community. A lot of it was uh, was through work. Uh, I hear these stories, and I actually have personal experience of being at uh, Wapanana Chat, um, pulling water out of the well and hauling <laughs> tin buckets to the goodies. I mean, that doesn't happen now, I don't think. But there was some. I mean, the the efficiency, the practicality of it, um, one could question. But certainly on the level of the heart, on the level of community, um, a very, very important aspect of our life. So the stupa, you think, well, wh what does it do? What's its practical function? You, ca you can't go inside it. Um, <laughs> it just sits there. <laughs> so traditionally, it's a, it's a memorial. Uh, in the time of the Buddha, the cremate the, the body and pile up a mound of earth. That was the, that was the tradition. And over, over the years, uh, with engineering, architectural uh, changes in regards to different cultures, um, the stupas have grown, the styles have changed, they've generally gotten bigger. And this one, as many of you, of you know, is uh, a copy of Shwedagon. Um, in Myanmar, a much scaled down version, but you also probably noticed the difference in colour scheme, how it used to be some months ago. We used to have half, half white, half gold. We've gone with the full gold look now. So this, the stupa itself has been here about 20 years. Um, bit of a history, as with so many projects, getting it going. But ultimately, um, Dennis Wintain and his family um, got that organised, had craftsmen come in from uh, Myanmar to build this. I wasn't here at that time, but certainly delighted to experience the result. So our community is a very multicultural one. I mean, you can just look around now and just how many nationalities can you count? Uh, certainly all of the Southeast Asian communities, Burmese, Thai, Lao, Cambodian, um, Sri Lankan, Malaysian, I'm just... <laughs> so one of the, uh, the, the, the concept developments here was to represent that cultural diversity. So the entrance on the east side um, has this very beautiful curved entry step and then the moonstone at the base of the stairs, uh, both from Sri Lanka. I'm fine. So we're very, very lucky. I mean, in terms of the development of that, again, just the concept, talking about it with people, people get interested, and that develops. And the amount of support that we've had, both from uh, Sri Lankan friends, many, many people, um, uh, locally here in New Zealand and also in Sri Lanka, sponsoring the actual cost of the fabrication, the shipping and so forth. So the, the, the moonstone as a symbol of progression, as you come in, you can have a look at the symbology there. I won't go into detail, but basically you come through 
these different realms and at the center is the lotus which many of you know I'm sure is a symbol of enlightenment so progressing into the to the stupa as a symbol a memorial of uh, of uh, the Buddha and then the development on the this the the west side the west side the sunset side we have the Parinibbana Buddha this re beautiful reclining image uh, from from Thailand uh, also behind the curtains at the back the idea was to have a terracotta mural representing part Thai part Kiwi um, you'll get to see that unfortunately it's not here <laughs> uh, just weren't able able to uh, get that organized in time but we have a representation of that uh, done by uh, by Bruce so a lot of people contributing towards both the manufacture the shipping and the cost of the moonstones the Sri Lankan element the little likewise with the this west side with the Thai and not limited to nationality so many people have been incredibly generous I mean Simon talked about the, the actual work involved but that energy of support and enthusiasm for the project in principle as a, as a, as a whole has been uh, very heartwarming to see that. And it will be a, a testimony. There's about, I think, about eight cubic metres of concrete <laughs> in this <laughs> the massive foundation. It'll be there for uh, millennia, I should think. We, who knows? I'd like to thank the the community as a whole that's all of you who come here and support this place uh, the committee who uh, have been very patient with my prevarications around the vision it has changed a lot the ideas they take a while to develop any kind of artistic if you like because as i say it's it's not a functional space in the in the sense of a bathroom or a kitchen or such it, we're trying to create an open space for the heart coming here. Um, Simon and Gavin for all of their input. Um, as Simon was saying, in the background there's so much work that goes on. So um, in particular Auntie Swan in the kitchen, Lindsay in the office and Bruce who built this pavilion and a few other aspects here. Um, people like that uh, who make that level of commitment it's uh, invaluable and I, I am personally incredibly grateful for uh, for that support it's a, it's Simon's it's impossible to name everybody who has been involved both in the life of the monastery and in the development of this project but um, our gathering today a very lovely hearty warm feeling to it um, I'm very conscious of the weather. <laughs> Some umbrellas being shuffled around. <laughs> um, yeah, just generally my feeling is one of, of deep appreciation, gratitude, to, to being part of a community like this. And it is projects like this that um, gather the Sangha together and creates a focal point for um, monks meeting and spending time together and for all of us catching up with old friends um, a very lovely thing to be a part of so many thanks I'll now pass on to Ajahn Teradama who, who will offer a few words thank you <laughs> very few words <laughs> So most uh, Ajahn Kusilo and Simon have talked about the practical aspects of this uh, particular project. And maybe just to give some uh, spiritual reflections, uh, this uh, a stupa comes from the time of the Buddha. The Buddha actually recommended that uh, people could, could uh, use this symbol of a stupa uh, to reflect upon, to remember the qualities of spiritual life. Uh, practically, it was a symbol where the relics of the Buddha, uh, the historical Buddha, he, he had a human body, just like all of us, for 80 years. 
but also he succumbed to the law of impermanence, universal law of impermanence, even the Buddha passed away. And then he realized that you know, some people appreciate some kind of a human connection. So his ashes were enshrined in a stupa. You know, and, and the Buddha said that uh, there's four places in India where the stupa was built, where the Buddha was born, where the Buddha was enlightened, where the Buddha passed away, and what's the fourth one? Uh, oh, gave his first sermon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm having a senior moment here. <laughs> but, but then the uh, the symbols caught on more universally beyond the time of the historical Buddha. So this uh, particular symbol here, even though we it's filtered through, you know, Buddhist cultural uh, symbolism, etc. But the main principle is, is to symbolize and remind us of our spiritual potential. Every one of us, you know, we're human beings, but uh, we have to also recognize we have a potential, a spiritual potential, which can be realized. That's what the Buddha was really, was really born into the world for, to remind us. The Buddha wasn't just born into the world to eat, become a successful businessman, and pass away. <laughs> but he became a spiritual teacher, so his, his, uh, his particular goal in life, if you like, was to represent the spiritual potential. And he spent 45 years teaching. You know, a lot of it was not very pleasant. Some people couldn't understand him very clearly, but he, he spent 45 years trying to teach human beings about this potential, to, that we, had, we could actually live it. Not only a potential, but to make it a, a way of life, a living example of what human beings are really here for. Are we here just to, uh, to eat, eat and be merry, or <laughs> to, to be enlightened? Huh? Anybody remember that? Huh? Sometimes we, we, can we can easily forget about it. Uh, now I realize the noise of materialism is so loud these days. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe, you know, when I, when I was young, a long time ago, you know, there was, was more nature around, for example. So sometimes you could just walk, like walking around here can be a spiritual experience. But nowadays, you know, with the sound of materialism so loud, sometimes it's helpful to have a real powerful symbol. You know, one time I met some people from the village here, and they said, oh, oh you, you're, you, come, you come up the hill there, don't you? That, that go, you live in that golden palace up there, don't you? <laughs> golden palace. I live in a little wooden hut. <laughs> but down the valley, they can see the golden palace here, you see? So somehow, well, I guess they associated golden palace with being rich, you know. <laughs> Not with being enlightened, but... <laughs> But with the Buddhist symbolism, it's a symbol of enlightenment, awakening. And as Simon mentioned, just the coming here sometimes, come here sometimes to, to, in this sacred space here, helps us to reconnect with that. Maybe it's hard to do it in our everyday life with all the activities and business we have, but, and sometimes it can be helpful to come to a place like this, make the effort, you know, not doesn't take so long, but to re reconnect with that potential in us of awakening. It's there all the time, you know, it's just, most of the time it's just sleeping. So this helps us wake it up, hopefully, yeah? Wake it up, wake up this, this spiritual potential to awakening to the truth of life. And basically, the more that we're in tune with the real truth of life, the more peaceful our life will be. You know, we can buy, you know, c uh, comfortable living conditions, but we can't buy really real peace. It's only something to be realized through the spiritual exercises the Buddha recommended. And when you begin to taste that, to some degree, you recognize how precious it is today. And it's still alive. You know, this is the outward symbol of it, but of course it takes the practice inside. You know, each one of us have heard something about the teachings. You need to spend a few moments every day to remind yourself, oh yes, watch the breathing. You know, allow yourself to center yourself in the breathing. Huh? to be in the present moment, you know, be awake and alive right now in the present moment. And we begin to practice this moment by moment, little by little, begins to become a way of life. And this is symbolized, of course, if you're, if you're really serious, you can always shave your head and come here. 
<laughs> but this symbol will be here for a long, long time. So, uh, so as we mentioned, this is something we can all take advantage of and make use of. Just coming here sometimes, remembering the stupa in Stokes Valley, yeah? the Golden Pagoda, the Golden Palace. <laughs> so, so I think I better pause there. I've been reminded. So <laughs> thank you. So now uh, we'll move towards the unveiling of these two lovely items. A little bit of choreography required. We'll get the uh, both sides. Yeah, both sides is fine. Either or, just to sort of get them out of the way. And uh, yourself and. In theory, if you want to just pull on that at the, on the other side, it should. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's good. Okay, so this first, as I say, the, the actual mural itself didn't arrive, but uh, we have this symbolic unveiling. Here we go. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so that's some idea of what we have in mind. <laughs> And then in front of that will be, we're kind of moving along here ahead of the weather, <laughs> but without further ado, this reveals So all of these things, this took us nearly a whole day just to get it from here over to there. <laughs> it's about 1.2 tonnes and quite delicate. I mean, really quite, uh, quite beautiful. So yeah, if you want to get the tray. If you, if you stand over there, where's Ajahn Tira? Uh, no, maybe this way. If you want to go over there. So we have a, a tray of... Uh, Various relic, relics, amulets, religious artifacts, sacred objects. There's some different ways we can talk about that. So these have been collected uh, partly by myself over several years. Um, our visiting monks have brought different objects and items from their respective monasteries. And uh, these will be placed under the Buddha image. And then the, this stone will be sealed in place. So these kind of create a, um, a different way we can think of it as a literal or a symbolic heart uh, of the Buddha, the sacred or spiritual energy of these objects um, kind of connected with or embodied in, the, in this uh, overall configuration.
So I think it's happening. <laughs> As the last of the relics and various objects get put, the Sangha can chant the Jayanto, these uh, verses of victory of the Buddha. And yeah, yep. Jayanto จิตตะพลังเกสิเสภะทวิโภคะเรอภิเสกเกสัมปะปุทธานังอากาปะโตภะโมดัตติสุนากะตังสุมังกะลังสุภะปะตังสุโหติตัง Sukano sumohoto jasuyetang brahmachari supadakinang kaya kamang waja kamang padakina padakinang mano kamang padakina he padakina para kinani katawana bandate para kinene